In the action you are about to see, a man has suffered a broken leg and has been administered first aid. If his injury has occurred within a reasonable distance from the base camp, a medical detachment soldier is sent for. He now arrives upon the scene carrying a collapsible army litter. While he is removing it from the pack board, one of the troopers brings over the injured man's skis, which are to be used as runners for the sled. After the litter is opened and placed on the skis, the trooper digs into the victim's rucksack and removes four contraction bands and some tent rope. The litter is attached to the skis by using the contraction bands, which are passed around the skis through the legs of the litter. Four contraction bands are then tightened with the combination tool. Two ski poles are attached to the front of the sled by threading a leather thong through the hole in the tip of each ski and tying it to the web of the basket ring of each ski pole. These ski poles will facilitate easy hauling and steering. Tent rope is attached to the rear of the litter. This is used by the ski trooper who travels at the rear to act as a brake on the downgrades. The injured trooper's sleeping bag is opened and placed on the litter. He is then carefully lifted on it and well covered in his sleeping bag. In addition, a tent section is thrown over him. If a rucksack is to be used as a pillow, it should be tied down under the skier's head. Before being transported to camp, the trooper is lashed to the litter with tent rope to keep him from rolling off the sled.
Another type sled, however, is used when the injury occurs at such a considerable distance from the base camp that a medical detachment soldier cannot be sent for. In this event, the injured man's fellow patrol members must resort to a more unique method of constructing a ski sled on which to transport him back to the base camp. Since a litter is not at hand, they must use their own ingenuity and skill, plus what materials they have with them. Inside this tent lies the injured ski trooper, waiting to be transported back to base camp. The members of his patrol utilize the frame of his rucksack as an important center around which the sled is built. First, the back straps and sacks are taken off two rucksack frames. Two men work together in attaching the rucksack frames to the injured man's skis. Then a sled adapter is clamped around the frame and placed in an upright position on the ski. After a contraction band is placed around the ski and passed through the adapter to anchor the rucksack frame to the ski, it is first tightened by hand and then with the combination tool. This operation is repeated at the four points where the rucksack frames rest upon the skis. Ski poles are inserted diagonally through the rucksack frames to serve as a cross brace for the bed of the sled. The projecting end of each frame is pulled down and securely tied with a leather thong to the ski poles at the point of their intersection. Nature plays a helpful role in the construction of this ski sled and supplies the trooper with two sturdy young saplings which they have cut and now trimmed to length. The men lash these two saplings to the rucksack frames with leather thongs. The ends of two ski climbers are fastened at a point directly over the toe iron of the ski by the toe strap, and the men work as a team, one at the front of the sled, the other at the rear, each lacing the ski climbers back and forth between the poles to make a bed. Tent ropes for pulling and guiding the sled 
are attached to the front of the skis by passing the rope through the holes in the tips of the skis. While at the rear of the sled, the other trooper attaches some tent rope to the rucksack frame. This will be used by one of the ski troopers to aid in balancing and breaking the ski sled as it is being hauled. The injured man's sleeping bag is brought from the tent and laid over the bed of the sled as a mattress. For a pillow, his rucksack is placed under his head. Always remember that the rucksack should be tied down before starting back to camp. The injured trooper's rifle is handed to him and he sets it on the sled alongside his legs. A section of the tent, which is now being struck, is wrapped around him as protection against the snow. This trooper is apparently quite interested in seeing how the other patrol members are coming along with him, and he watches them as they securely lash him to the sled with tent rope. If the skier feels capable to assist, he is given a ski pole to aid in steadying the sled as it is dragged along. However, he should not do this unless he feels thoroughly strong and able. Before leaving, the troopers who haul the sled set up their skis and put climbers on them to ensure traction on the snow. The campsite having been struck, the patrol members now shoulder their rucksacks and start off for the main camp base. Since two rucksack frames have been used to construct the injured man's sled, one of which was his own, one patrol member must now carry his rucksack without the support of its steel frame. Two men take the drag lines to haul the sled, while the third trooper takes a position at the rear of the sled to act as a balance man. On a steep climb, the rear man has come forward to aid on uphill pulling. Now the men have reached the top. They must stop and prepare for a safe descent down the other side of the slope, as every precautionary measure must be taken to see that the sled doesn't get out of control.
tent rope is wrapped around each runner of the sled to act as a rough lock or break on the running surface of the skis. The three men doing the hauling remove the climbers from their skis as they no longer require the traction needed for climbing. Now they will have a smooth sliding surface on the runners of their skis for the downhill descent. On the steep downhill slopes, one man guides the sled from the front while the other two men stay at the rear to hold the sled from sliding out of control. To contour a medium slope successfully, one man remains at the front of the sled to do the pulling. The second front man stays close to the downhill side of the sled, grasping a short rope to keep it from tipping, while the rear man stays slightly uphill, holding the rear rope taut to prevent the sled from any side slip. The injured trooper uses his ski pole on the upward side to help guide and break the sled. To contour a steep slope, one man remains at the front to do the pulling and the other two men are in positions at the lower side of the sled to hold it into the slope. Ski poles are used as levers to prevent the sled from tipping downward. This allows the sled to ride on the uphill ski only. With the poles acting as levers, the downhill ski is in midair. The injured man who is still active renders considerable assistance by leaning into the slope. Remember, it is important to make full use of equipment and materials at hand for the construction of emergency transportation so that an injured trooper may be safely returned to camp with the least amount of danger and discomfort.